Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Haltech Q&A. Now, we've got something a little bit different today. We've got Ben Strader from EFI University here. He's going to be going through a bunch of the questions that he gets in his training seminars so that we can all get the right questions and answers. Hello, everybody. My name is Ben Strader from EFI University in Lake Havasu, Arizona. But today, I'm here at Haltech in Australia, and I'm going to talk to you about some of the questions we get asked through our training seminars. So one of the first questions we always get is, how much more power can I make if I change to EFI instead of a carburetor? Well, the truth is, not really that much. See, these boxes are here to help us control the engine, much the same way our carburetor or even our distributor used to do. At the end of the day, what this thing allows us to do is manage the power that the engine makes more effectively. Things like traction control and boost control and how we apply the throttle can all be controlled or managed through an ECU better than when we had mechanical linkages to a carburetor. You see, an engine's an air pump, and how much air it pumps dictates how much power it makes. These devices don't necessarily help us move more air or make more power, but simply apply it more effectively and make the vehicle faster. The second question that we often get at EFI University is what's more important, spending time tuning my fuel curves or my ignition curves? And once again, the answer is somewhat variable, but obviously both are important. Choosing an air-fuel ratio is largely a function of managing the heat that the engine might be making and, and getting more horsepower or more exhaust emissions or maybe even more gas mileage. But choosing the correct ignition timing is there to help us optimize the amount of power the engine's making. We can make the engine more aggressive or less aggressive depending on the conditions that we have. But ultimately, we can't get the best performance out of the engine unless we tune both. All right, so the last question for the grand finale, this one we hear all the time, and that is, which is the right air-fuel ratio for my engine? Well, that's somewhat of a challenging question to answer because there's so many variables, and a lot of it depends on the specific power output for a given package size of engine. The air-fuel ratio that's right for a small engine that makes, let's say, 500 horsepower might be different than a large engine that makes, say, 600 horsepower. At the end of the day, 500 or 600 or 1,000 horsepower is always 1,000 horsepower worth of heat, and it's how we're going to manage that heat. If I have a really large engine that's making a reasonably high amount of power, I'm going to choose a rich air-fuel ratio. But if I have a really small engine that has to dissipate all of that heat from that 500 or 600 or 1,000 horsepower, it's going to require even a richer air-fuel ratio. And then if you think about the way the engine's being used, it gets even more complex. Imagine, if you will, a drag racing engine that spends only four or five seconds at a time producing a lot of power, heat, energy, those kind of things. Now imagine if we took that same engine and we put it into an offshore power boat and it has to make that same power, but for maybe 20 or 30 minutes. So choosing an air-fuel ratio is critical depending on the way the engine gets operated. It also is critical depending on what you're planning on doing at that moment. Do I want economy or emissions? Do I want reliability or power? So there's not really any one right answer that, that says this is the correct air-fuel ratio for you at all times, but understanding how to choose the right air-fuel ratio is just as important in the long run. Well, that just about wraps up our Q&A here at Haltech in Australia. Of course, we'll be teaching seminars here this weekend, and if you want to attend one of our seminars, you can check out our website, and we have locations all over the world. We'll be coming to a place near you soon, I'm sure, so uh, come out and see us. If, uh, if you want to see more of me giving you technical info, then subscribe to our YouTube channel. And I'll tell you what, don't forget to like and share us on Facebook as well. All of those links are available below. So my name's Ben Strader, and we'll see you soon at one of our seminars.